Welcome everyone to our episode 52 with Rachel Babler. It's an honor to have you here. And in today's episode, we are going to speak about it's not a midlife crisis, it's a midlife awakening. So the topic is very spicy. We are going to have a lot of breakthroughs. And the idea is to start going with the bio of Rachel. She is a forensic analyst that turned entrepreneur. She's a TEDx speaker and number one international bestseller co-author, advocate, grew up in Southern California near the sunny beaches of San Diego, and has always been an avid explorer, traveler, musician, and advocate. Rachel has had an eclectic background. After high school, she became a paramedic advocating for the health of those having 911 emergencies, contract negotiations, and the, certainty, the uncertainty of her job led her and several co-workers to go back to school. She took a forensic course and soon found herself pivoting careers. The fascinating world of forensics led her to a 20-year career to now help advocate for the truth by analyzing latent prints, testifying in court, conducing research, sharing her research findings through speaking and teaching engagement, and ultimately participating on a prestigious forensic board. At the height of her career in forensics, she quit her job, called Turkey to pursue her why, and during a global pandemic, she discovered what that was, to empower others to consciously advocate on a stage or through music so that they can heal, inspire, and unite the human collective. She shared her message on the globally recognized TEDx stage in October 2021, but one of her biggest accomplishments was advocating of her own health when she was diagnosed with a rare brain tumor in 2008. She's a storytelling strategist supporting clients who want to amplify their voice, brand, and message through various media platforms such as podcasts, TEDx stage, and through music. She loves to support those who want to inspire others make positive changes and create movements, who use their voice to create human impact and advocate for causes near and dear to them. One of the things Rachel is most proud of is being a mom to her two children, Austin, 14, and Cameron, 13. She considers her epic growth partners her greatest teachers and I agree completely. <laughs> <laughs> so Rachel, what of all the, the things that I just read about your bio and about your life, how would you begin to describe the midlife crisis? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, it was an interesting time for me because I was at the height of my career in forensics and I was traveling all over the country speaking at forensic conferences. I was teaching at law enforcement agencies. I created a class and um, I was on a very prestigious forensic board. And um, so when you looked at it from the outside, you know, I, I was hitting all the things that, you know, you'd want to accomplish as a um, you know, forensic analyst, you know, going outside of your normal job of just analyzing evidence, but also doing like research and speaking and teaching and all that stuff. And, um, but, you know, it, and I was, you know, kind of like at my 20 year mark and, um, I had gotten divorced about five years prior. And, you know, when I had my brain tumor, that's when I started really my personal development work. Um, I didn't really know how to meditate. I didn't, wasn't into all the woo woo stuff. You know, I was raised a, a religious, you know, in the Methodist church. And, um, so I was always a little skeptical of it. And, um, when I started to meditate, that's really when things changed for me, because I think I, I think we're all intuitive. We're all intuitive beings, especially our children. I, you know, you probably see that with your with yours, I do with mine, um, but they're so um, 
just in tune with, you know, surroundings, with their body, with what's going on. And I think we lose that as we become adults and are conditioned and have these limiting beliefs that we carry in. And that really, um, you know, kind of opened up that inner voice of mine that has, you know, that I maybe questioned over the years because it wasn't, I knew it was there, but I didn't, I, I didn't trust it all the time. Mm. And um, meditating really kind of created that trust of like not doubting my intuition and my inner voice and like where it was directing me. And so I was flying back from a forensic board meeting from the East Coast back to San Diego. And on that flight was when I was like, I'm done. And it, it was the weirdest thing because people asked me like, well, how did that feel? Or did you, I just knew with my, I felt it in my entire body that I was done and it was time for me to do something else. And when I went back to work and gave my two week notice and everybody found out, they just thought I was crazy. <laughs> a lot of people were, you know, questioning it because I was doing everything that you would want to do um, in that in that profession. And um, but I just knew it was time for me to move on. And, you know, I had no plans. I really gave my two weeks notice and I quit my job and I had nothing planned. I didn't know what was next. But, you know, nourishing again, strengthening that inner muscle. I didn't doubt that there was something that was going to come to fruition and I would figure it out. Mm. that's a beautiful story and I can also relate in in some points to that because I also was in the corporate world for a for a while and there was a moment where I said enough is enough and yeah. as, as you say many people think that you are crazy because it's a stable job it pays well and you have yeah. a lot of gifts and a lot of things but in the end, as, as you mentioned, it is something inside of you that is constantly telling you, you mm -hmm. can give a lot more and you are destined to, to do something extra. Although at the moment, it is a completely blank space, no? Yeah. <laughs> and you don't see the things, but you, you feel them, no? Yep. So, yeah. It, yeah, just tell me, Tom. Yeah, no, I think that's a good point that you just brought up is that you may not see, I didn't see I had another job lined up for me. I didn't see what was next, but I felt like I felt okay with it all. And, you know, when we start to tune into our body and like what our body's telling us, because when I was sitting at the desk at that job, I, my body was telling me this is your, this isn't good for you anymore. It, it was stressful. There was just a lot of things going on with the agency I was working with. And, um, and it just, it, you know, just wasn't in alignment with who I was becoming and evolving and we evolve over time, right? So I think it'd be great if everybody had a midlife awakening, you know, like if, and it not like shame it or judge it as like a bad thing. It's really a good thing. It's a, it's a positive thing for you. Yes. And I think, as you mentioned, also the, the stage of children, I was just listening to a a podcast of Robin Sharma interview and he mentioned a phrase that stuck with me because he said that adults are children that have become wasted mm -hmm. so that's what we do many times yeah. when we are children we are connected to the source yep. we receive the messages very easily we are living in the present moment we are open to just live and just yep. learn yep. and as we become adults we get taken away many of those things yeah. and that's what take us into a numbing state where our bodies can no longer speak so clearly they will speak but they will have to be louder and and you will have to be in a sort of awakening or breakthrough so that you pay attention which is yeah many times those moments where we feel that that we are not we don't belong in that place anymore and yeah. the the energy feels because you feel drained you no know? you yeah. you don't feel alive like you used to feel <laughs> yeah and um 
it just, it, it was a really, you know, and I look back now in divine timing of all of it was perfect because I quit in 2017. My sister was diagnosed with colon cancer and she passed away. Her and, her and my father passed away four months apart in 2018. I would have not spent all the time I did with them had I been working that old job. I, I wouldn't have spent, you know, I had a job where I could work on my laptop and take it everywhere with me. So I was able to be at hospitals and, you know, wherever they were. And so, you know, it's, it's all like, it all works out the way it should. We just got to trust that. Yes. Um, that's one of the, of the things that many people will like to hear that how are you going to be able to trust when you don't see the things or what was um, some sort of relief after doing that step, that big step that made you realize that you had made the, good, the right choice? Well, again, going back to how my body felt, like when I quit and I, I was done, like I just felt like this huge load come off of me. Um, and, and it was exciting, you know, it was kind of like being a child again. It's like, oh, I get to play and figure out like what I'm gonna do. And so it was a really exciting time. And, um, you know, I think we've all been in situations where we've said, I should have trusted my gut. Should have trusted my gut. Everybody said that before. I should have trusted it. I knew something was wrong or I knew and I didn't, you know, follow through or I didn't say something. So we've all been there. So how do we get back to where we were when we were a child and we never questioned it, right? So, um, you know, I did, I started, you know, meditation's been interesting for me. I started it right after my brain tumor because I was freaked out and I would have, if you told me to eat crickets or grasshoppers, I would have eaten them. If if you, if it, if it would take away my brain tumor, I would have done anything you told me. So I tried it all. Like I started meditating. I started visualizations, you know, visualizing the tumor shrinking in my head and, you know, all these different things that I'd never done before. Um, but it's all baby steps. You know, it's really, you don't, and meditation also comes in different forms. It could be walking, it could be reading a book, it could be yoga, it could be breath work. Um, you know, it doesn't, it's not really just laying there and being still. I do believe that when we get present, it's one of our most powerful times, you know, for our, our own experience and what, you know, getting, receiving information downloads for, um, you know, whatever it might be. But you know, it all, you know, there's so many apps out there you can use that you can do guided meditations. And then you kind of just figure out by trying different things. It's like going to the gym, like, oh, I, I'm going to try spin, spin class, or I'm going to try, you know, tennis, or I'm going to try, you find out what works good for you. And then you, you use that and then you build upon it. So I, learned a meditation through a guy named Jesse Elder. It was called Prime Light Meditation. And um, and I started doing that. It's a 20 minute meditation. And then I started doing it a couple times a day. So, um, and now I'm ready to like take my meditation to the next level. Like I really wanna go deeper and go more within longer periods and stuff like that, because I see how powerful it is. It's It's so incredibly powerful once you start committing to that practice and doing it every day and being disciplined about it like there's you'll start to see all the synchronicities and synergy and like the people that you meet and and all the things that start to happen for you and that's what happened for me when i quit my job oh i met this person they need support with this and i helped them or then i met this person through this person and you know everything just started to like align a kind of not only yeah align but just present itself to me and it was like and, you know, and in those moments, you're just like, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I completely agree with you that meditation doesn't have to be um, painful or struggling with your mind. And yeah. we, we bought that concept that we have to uh, make our minds be in blank state. I don't think anyone can do that unless the enlightened people that have practiced oh, yeah for like 30 years or more but 
all the regular people like us, we, we have thoughts and they are okay. You just have to not pay attention to all of them and pay attention to the ones that are just repetitive because they are trying to tell you something. You know? Yeah. And yeah. what you mentioned about the, the things about the exercise, I also experienced that usually when I meditate, I really uh, calm my mind and I arrive to a state where I am more open. And after I do the exercise or during the exercise, that's when the downloads come. Oh, yeah. Me, no? Yep. Same yeah. with me. Yeah. Yeah. I get a lot when I walk, just walking. Walking is a very, if you're a creative person or if you want to be more creative, like walk, just do a 15, 20 minute walk a day. Like it's amazing just getting outside and moving your body and um you'll get you know receive a lot of information but um but yeah it's been and it, you know it's non-negotiable so when you start seeing the evidence and the things that happen and the things that are presented to you you won't stop doing it you're going to want to do more of it right yeah. <laughs> and that's that's what you do and and also i use a, a meditation in the at night mm. where you are supposed to fall asleep, no? It is designed for you to get into a longer period, but it is a, an abundance meditation. So it mm -hmm. is something that walks you through feeling abundant, feeling worthy, and feeling that possibilities are going to come. And since I have done that meditation, many, many things happen in my yeah. life that those synchronicities just a week ago or some days ago, a friend that was in the industry with me asked me, how are you meeting all those people that you are interviewing? And I said, it's just the universe that is bringing me the people. And I am, or I am being brought to the, to the spaces yeah. where I meet the people. And, and I have been amazed by the energy that I am, vibrating and i think that that is one of the of the things that people can uh, identify with the energy yeah. no yeah how did you know that your myth life awakening was not a crisis <laughs> um well i i would say i've always been a person that kind of goes against the grain. So I'm, I haven't been one that's like, I'm a little bit of a disruptor, I'd say, but in a good way. Um, you know, I, I really, it's, it's so hard to explain because I think I just felt at peace with it. And that's really how it wasn't like chaotic and like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? It was like, not a stressing. It was almost like you finally did it. Like we've been waiting for this time. So it was almost like once I made that decision, like I, my entire being felt validated that I've been doing all this work for so many years. And I've, and I don't like to say I finally have arrived because I think we're constantly evolving, but I did arrive in that moment. And, and I felt it and I knew it was the right thing for me. And you know, if there's people that are questioning their jobs or relationships or, you know, anything like that, just take some time for yourself every day and be intentional about like what it is that you need clarity on. And it'll come um, when you, you know, meditate or do whatever it is that you want to do to just give yourself a little time to like get some clarity because you know, we're so busy with everything, our day to day lives. And, you know, one thing that I do every day, too, and I think this, this was really helpful for me in this decision was um, a couple, a year or two before I quit my job, I started reading, I read The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. Mm -hmm. And that book really changed my life because it, it was developing a morning practice that consisted of, you know, reading and scribing and visualization and meditation and um, mantras and things like that. You kind of create your own miracle morning, but it was a guide for me to start doing that practice. And that really shifted a lot for me. So again, fast forward, you've done, you're doing the work during the work, during the work, and an opportunity comes up for you to take action in some way. 
and you you won't question it because you have been doing that work up until that point so yeah i i completely relate to that because i also when i decided that i wanted to to leave the job it was like six months before it happened because in my case i was uh, i already knew that i wasn't good in that area i didn't want to quit because i wanted to receive uh, some money that they had to give me so if i quit they would enough give me the money but yeah. what i did is just relax in the space i knew that i had a, not a good relationship with the boss that i had and she had a very negative energy so i said this is just a, a matter of time that she's going to do what she wants to do for a long time no so yeah. it's just fire me so yeah, i yeah. just waited many of my friends in the in the area or in the space um told me but how are you so uh, peaceful with this or why you don't care and i said because I, I care more for my health. Yeah. And right now I'm seeing that I I just arrived to my place, to, to your house, and that was depleted of energy. I just wanted to watch TV in the afternoons instead of doing something extra. I didn't even want to go out and, and meet people. So I yeah. said, this is not a good symptom. I'm, I'm not like that. I was changing myself. Yeah. And as you mentioned, you sometimes can you don't have a plan usually when you take these decisions you don't have a plan you just know that things are going to unfold and maybe the right things are not going to unfold uh, right away yeah. but the the way is going to to come and you will give the correct directions yeah. and that's something that happened with reflection no yeah i mean i when I quit my job, I was so 46 years old. So for 25 years, I was used to, or even longer than that, I was used to going somewhere to work every day, you know, Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday, whatever it was. So I needed that routine still. That was because I didn't feel like if I was at home, like I wouldn't be productive and I needed some accountability. So I joined WeWork and that's that co-working space um, where you can like rent a desk. And that's where I went and that's where I met some people and they were all entrepreneurs and young and passionate and, you know, wanted to, you know, build their purpose driven business and like they just really inspired me. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad I went there and I hired a coach to help me figure it out because I didn't know, you know, I wasn't didn't know what it was, but I needed somebody to help me with that. So you know, there's a lot of people that want to help support people like me and others that, you know, do want to create that shift or build that purpose driven life, no matter what age you are. Age is just a number. Like we've got to really get it out of our head, like this midlife crisis thing, because yeah. it's really not. It's really like coming back to your soul's purpose and your, you know, like what it is that you were maybe meant to do in this lifetime. Yes. And um from from the things that you discover uh, during this engagement with the with the entrepreneurs what was the thing that resonated more with you in terms of the of what you wanted to do or what were your how did you discover your gifts that you had probably hidden due to the work no yeah um i think you know, what inspired me being around them was they were always trying to figure things out, like where um, everybody was there to help each other, you know, whether it was like help with funnels or social media or expanding, like how do they re expand their audience or, you know, whatever it might be. So it was like this table we all sat at and everybody would talk to each other. And, um, you know, it was after my, I quit my job, I knew I was, I was supposed to discover my why. And I started reading, you know, Simon Sinek's books on finding your why and start with why. And even Corey Poirier has written his book about on why too. And, um, 
and when I started reading that, like, that's when, you know, I, I started developing, like, you know, what my passion, like what, what my passions are and like, how could I build a business around that? And it really wasn't until after my sister passed away that I discovered what that was. So it took some time and, you know, the life of an entrepreneur is definitely like highs and lows and, you know, figuring it out, but it's also exciting. And, and when you're, when you're doing stuff that you love to do, it's, it's not work. So it's such fun. It's a fun space and it's so much service to, to other people to help them on their, you know, journey on their business journey or personal or whatever it is, it might be. So yeah, after my sister passed away and I wrote a song about, about, um, her cancer journey and I, you know, my guitar instructor and I, we played it at her celebration of life. And then it wasn't until like a year after that, that I put that song together in a lyric video. And I started sharing that with colon cancer awareness groups. And I wanted to share my sister's story so that people would get screened because her, her cancer was caught late and her doctor didn't take her symptoms seriously. And um, so I kind of used that as a way to advocate um, her story through music, but to advocate for a cause. And that's what I did my TEDx talk on last year was the power of advocating through music. So I'm working with beta clients right now, and it's really fun because I get to, you know, help them share their story in a song and then, you know, help them advocate for something that they're really passionate about. And I've always been an advocate. Like that's been, you know, like when you start to discover your why you can take all these bits and parts and pieces that you've already done in your life, me being a paramedic, me being in forensics and mm -hmm. my own health journey of advocating for myself. And how do I m marry a passion with my experiences and what I love to do? So, so it's been a lot of fun and, um, and I'm sure things will still continue to evolve. Um, but I have not looked back since I quit that job. Since the day <laughs> I quit never looked back it was the best decision i've one of the best decisions i've ever made yeah that's also something that people can start learning that um you should never go back or well not look back and trying to look in your life for the experiences that you have in order to melt them and yeah. bless them into a, a great mix that is going to create now your purpose and, and I that's what I also did in my case I, I had a science background I, I was passionate about teaching so I love sports so I start combining all of those things and and I finally arrived to the mix of the five pillars of health yeah. and and as you say what we do in the, this entrepreneur journey is up and down, up and down, but it's always learning. And for yeah. me, I see it also as a therapy because, because we connect with people and we help them into their own journey, but yeah. we are also helping and evolving ourselves and yeah. we are constructing new, new stories in our mind and, and remodeling our identity, no? Yeah. 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 It's, it's been exciting. And, uh, you know, I have such a different perspective on things when challenges come up or, you know, like before, um, you know, when I was in my old job and stuff, like I would, you know, maybe play the victim or, you know, why is this happening to me? And, and it, it really has changed for me with how I look at some of those things that come up now, like, these are great opportunities for growth or lessons or like, what's this trying to teach me? Where is my work that still needs to be done? You know, so um, it's it, the expansion and the the growth process has been probably the most rewarding for me. Yeah, I, and you don't see life in the same way, as you mm -hmm. mentioned. When, when this pandemic started, mm -hmm. uh, many people was stressed, many people was like, depleted yeah. depressed etc with all the news and the toxic things yeah. and I was just in the best moment I think of my of my thing because yeah. that was when I published the book and so I said for me it was a blessing because 
many, many people, instead of going to the victim mode, started to look within, yeah. to look yeah. more about themselves, to have time to, to breathe, to reflect. And they were avid of, of things that make them align what, what they had inside, no? Because it was a, a mixture of many reflections and emotions that they were discovering, but they didn't know how to channel them. Yeah, yeah. I think the pandemic was also the pandemic pause for so many peoples. It really caused us, I mean, literally, you know, we everything was shut down. We had to stay at home. So everybody had to take a pause and, you know, it, there are a lot of positive things that came out of it. You know, families came closer together. They're talking to their children more and, mm -hmm. you know, and then self-discovery of like, what am I doing with my life? Is this, you know, uh, life, you know, we got a, a, a good reflection for many things, you know, life is short. Like, what can I do more in my life to make it more fulfilling and for my family? And so, yeah, it was, it was a time, a good time for many things, I think. And I was the same way. Like, I don't watch the news. So I no, just kind of carried I'm... on and I did road trips and I like just did my thing. Um, and I, I, it was a very creative time for me too. Yes. 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 I, I don't also don't watch news. I just, by the people that I was following, I, I discovered many, many people that was telling the truth. And yeah. telling the things that that I needed, and I research as yeah. I move in the in the science space. Many people ask me, "Well, what do you think about this? What do you think yeah. about the whatever they they occur?" And I I just try to guide them in the best way possible, and also try to uh, research more about yeah. what happened. No, and yeah. that was also a a space where we discover that now we have to trust more in ourselves than in the outside world no totally mm -hmm. which is what we should have known before but this pause gave us the strength to to trust more inside than to trust outside no yeah for sure yeah a lot of good things came at least for me a bit you know there's certainly a lot of hard times too and challenging times for many and um but i think you know, hopefully for personal reflection, it, you know, that was good for many people. Yes. How do you nourish and strengthen your intuition to be able to trust it? Um, I would say probably, like I, I mentioned earlier, I think it's consistently nourishing. So, you know, if you want to have strong muscles and a healthy body you consistently eat well you consistently go to the gym or walk or run or do something swimming that you know feeds your body and for me my in, inner voice that's meditating so it's it's kind of like you know we do all these things for other things but you know what do we do for our, our internal voice and our intuition and and that's meditating so i get up 4 30 every day and that's a, one of the first things i do is meditate and then i try to do it again in the afternoon and then at the evening my kids and i get together and um <clears throat> they like to listen to like the the sound bowl music and you know those kind of like you know really soft kind of melody tones and stuff and we'll play that and we all fall asleep <laughs> <laughs> That's a yeah, good way to relax. It's, yeah, it's really committing to it. You know, discipline is freedom. Yeah. When you are disciplined and you do things consistently, it's freedom because you see the results and you see there's less of a load on you. There's, you know, you have clarity, you know what your next steps are, you have direction and and you keep the momentum going. And that for me was key for pandemic too, because you know, my kids were home. I was now working at home and I had my kids full time at home mm. for a year. And that was really, you know, a um, big change. And had I not done those practices every day, mm. I probably would have been in a different space. Yes. Not yeah. in a good space. <laughs> yeah, that, that, I agree. I agree. And many, many of the people that I was also helping through the pandemic right when it when it started and by the end of the of the course that I, that I gave them 
they told me, I don't know what would happen to me if I didn't enroll in, in, in your uh, program, because now I see the things completely different as they try to solve those, you know, yeah. what was happening. So it is that uh, work that many times we postpone or we procrastinate or we don't see it as valuable because we are being told to just uh, appreciate the work that that is giving us something material or that is giving us something in terms of um, manifested things. But this intuitive work, this nourishment of the emotions, as we cannot see it, or many times we, we are not seeing the manifestation of it so quickly, we become desperate or scared. Yeah. Or simply we were programmed to neglect many of those things. Yeah. And we don't know how to do it. So it's just starting very, very small and doing some reflections while you walk, you can write, you can listen to some guided meditations. All of those strategies work for many people. And even at doing exercise, taking some space in your mind to capture the, yeah. the thoughts that you are having in those moments, it's going to help you, but you have to follow up because if you are doing exercise or you are walking or and you have a download or you feel something and you don't follow through, it's not going to do anything. So yeah. it's, it will speak to you, but your voice has to be uh, fine-tuned, no? Mm -hmm. You have to find the right frequencies. It's yeah. like learning to play the guitar, no? You can tell me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And you know, one thing I do in the morning, and I, I never really done this before, but I started doing it um, this last year was aligned action. So in the morning, you know, I think of all like, what, how do I see my future self now? And what steps can I take to get there? So I just write down like a brain dump, like all the things that I could do today to get myself closer to that. And I pick just a few of those things, and then I do them. And, you know, that's where you'll see the synergy, you know, the synchronicities, like things start to happen. And, um, but yeah, you can get these downloads, but like, what are you doing if, with it? So taking action, you know, daily is another thing that's consistent that I do now. And I've seen some major changes just with doing that. And as you mentioned, discipline is freedom. And that's a hard concept to wire in the brain of of many uh, people because mm -hmm. they hear the word discipline and they just reject or they block themselves and and it is not as bad as it sounds or yeah. as, as bad as they have made it sound yeah it, just to get used to the things that is a routine like brushing your teeth yeah. or like having a shower all of those things you don't even think about them you create the habit is creating those habits now to nurture your own mind and your emotions no yeah yeah for sure like when i think of you know discipline is freedom i remember a mentor said that one time on a post and i was like oh my gosh it just shifts the whole feeling of it you know around discipline like discipline people think it's hard and like it's a negative thing, but no, it's like a freeing thing. It's, you know, when you do, when you are consistent and you're disciplined with yourself to do these things, you'll see the rewards of it for sure. Yeah. The, the constant work pays off very well, very quickly in terms of the time that you have invested, mm -hmm. not instantaneous as people want, but that's what I was just mentioning uh, in a video that I you do the on Wednesdays. I do some reflections in in Facebook, and mm -hmm. and I was speaking about uh, the power of being vulnerable, and how you finding your own weaknesses and and going back into your failures 
can really discover many of the lessons that you should pay more attention to in order to not repeat the story or not follow <laughs> the patterns, no? <laughs> I know, because like, if something's repeating itself, I'm like, darn it, what am I not getting here? Like, I don't want this, you know, I want this, I want this to stop. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I've become more aware of things, but where before I would just be like, you know, I wouldn't really see it, but now I, I see it from this outside lens of, oh, this is interesting. Why is this showing up again? <laughs> the, the comparison that I that I love to do is that we are making our own series. Mm -hmm. We are recording our own episodes of the yeah. of our life, and we can play with them. We can twitch them. We can uh, trim them. We can edit many of the things. We can put new music, and we can gather new characters for the for the next episode. Yeah. But if we don't follow the the series, we get lost. We get lost in the in the next thing, in the next thing, and the next, and you don't really have time to reflect. No. <laughs> Yeah, it's so true. Like I've never really looked at our life as like a game or it's a movie and we're the directors of it, right? We can yeah. direct it however we want and however we choose to um, and have fun with it, you know? Like there's a thing on my vision board. It says, you know, it, it's like asking the universe what magic you're going to show me today. And it's mm -hmm. really like, you know, staying in that space too of fun and play and yeah, I mean, there are things that come up, but, you know, it's what we do with it and what we, you know, how we, how we handle them, which really will kind of like create the momentum or stop it or, you know, ship things for you. So I, I, I'm going to share just this story so that we can uh, get closer to, to closing the, the topic. Mm -hmm. And as I just told you before we started the recording, I had a very, very bad stomach ache yesterday and thinking now how would I handle that in the past and how I handle that today, it's completely different because <laughs> uh, three years or four years ago or more, I would, I would have taken something. I would have taken a pill. I would have gone to the, to the doctor. I would have looked for something to take away the pain and just yeah. to numb my body but now my my healing was completely different was meditating was listening to my body was trying to figure out what did i eat that made me bad and i discovered what i ate and and i of course i threw it away and i just started to heal in just one afternoon without taking pills, without uh, worrying about this uh, having more side effects. And my body was very uh, open to receive the suggestion of the meditation and the brain, the body and the brain and your heart are connected yeah. with each other. And you send those messages of healing and your body doesn't have other option than to heal because that's that's the state of the body yeah to be in homeostasis to be in, in a state of balance you bring it back back uh, or you disrupt the balance by eating something bad <laughs> yeah <laughs> or by by having negative emotions too much time so we have to bring our bodies in balance every day and all of those are techniques of giving you the tools to wrap your system up and take those bold decisions so what would you say to to the people to the the community about what would be the your last message that you want to convey for them I would, I would say, trust yourself. Hmm. Like when things show up in your life or, or there's something in your mind that just keeps going in this direction, in this direction, but you don't see how is that even possible? Like trust yourself and, 
and go within and see, like explore it further. Oh, that's interesting. Like get curious with it and have fun with it. Like I think we're just all too serious about things in our life and, 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 you know, listen to what your, your body's telling you, listen to what your mind and your soul and your spirit are telling you, um, because your answers are all within. I, I believe that. Completely agree. Thank you, Rachel. It was a beautiful uh, way to, to see our crisis as mm -hmm. an opportunities and awakenings instead of just staying in a victim mode. No, thank yeah. you for everyone for listening. We will listen to each other in our next episode. We encourage you to give us your questions, your uh, breakthroughs, any kind of phrase that we mentioned that stick with you. Just help us to grow this community and to expand. Thank you. And we will listen to each other on the next one. Bye.